Hey, welcome back everyone. It is Nick Kleitch. I hope you're doing well. For those that know the drill, go ahead and fast forward to about a minute and some change. For those who are just seeing me for the first time, what's up? Uh, my name is Nick Kleitch. I'm the creator of the Life with Nick YouTube channel and the host of the Life with Nick podcast. Uh, if you want a kind of full sweep on what I am, who I am, how I go about my business, uh, what this thing's all about, my YouTube channel, uh, head over to the YouTube channel, check out the introduction video that will give you a full scale understanding of who I am, where I come from, why I started all this up. And uh, yeah, I appreciate you guys doing that. My goal is to figure out if you are for me, if not totally understandable, uh, but if you are, would love for you to stick around uh, and dive into some of the book reads, dive into some of the podcasts and uh, some other kind of fun future uh, endeavors that we'll be taking on. So without further ado, we are going to get back into the book read that we are doing. And for this month, we will continue to be reading Psycho Cybernetics by Dr. Maxwell Maltz. Been a great book thus far. Love diving into the topics that we have covered. And to just do a quick synopsis, we just finished up chapter seven. You can acquire the habit of happiness. It's kind of taking a little bit of a detour, if you will, into what happiness is, how Dr. Maltz describes happiness, and why we needed to spend a little bit of time there. However, we're turning back to get on the main path for chapter eight today. And I'm so, so excited to be sharing this one with you um, because I think it's, as far as this book goes, the first real chapter where we get very tactical on the how to and the what, as far as where we are today, where we want to be studying a book for practical use. There are some other great chapters, of course, that Dr. Uh, Maxwell Maltz and myself have kind of elaborated on and, and taught on. However, when I was reading this chapter, I specifically said, hey, there's something to this chapter eight, and I really just want to make sure we hammer in on that today. The ingredients of the success type personality and how to acquire them. What a fun thing to dive into. And I really sincerely mean that because oftentimes in personal development, we're wondering the how to, we're wondering how do we do this? How do we do that? Uh, he says, hey, sit down, pay attention. Uh, and I hope to deliver a very strong message today uh, within this chapter eight. So just as a doctor learns to diagnose disease from certain symptoms, failure and success can also be diagnosed. So let's just that soak that in for just a little bit here. So just as a doctor would learn to diagnose a disease with certain symptoms, failure and success have a diagnosis as well. People do not find success just floating around as well as come to failure. These things are, uh, in, there, there are certain frameworks that we use on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis to get us to where we need to be. And that is uh, success or ultimately not wanting to be a failure. It's kind of, you know, two sides of the same coin there. So people carry their seeds around in their personality and character. And as we said in the title, a success type personality, what we're going to be doing is saying, hey, there are certain people over in this in this camp who have an abundance in life. They have great relationships, great health, all that good stuff. And they have people on the other side. Uh, they're trending maybe downward. Uh, they're a little bit more cynical. They're a little bit pessimistic. They don't think they got a lot of things for them. Or they're going through a tough patch. We all go through that. But the ultimate goal is to kind of trend sword uh, the successful overall path. And so we're trying to find ingredients. We're trying to find traits. We're trying to find things we can study to get us on that trajectory of success. So one way for people to become successful, and this might be straightforward, is to study success. Well, that's interesting, Coach Nick. It's like, yeah, one way to find wealth and develop wealth is to study people that have, have become wealthy. If you see someone that has a great marriage, it's worthwhile to study what you see and what you want to attract into your life. And so as straightforward as that is, one way for people to actually become more successful is to study success. Everyone may have a different definition of success, of course, but when we, well, when we study and look at success, specific themes begin to emerge. Personality traits, character traits, specific habits and behaviors, all of that is what makes up success. And I really wanna drill on here before I move forward, habits and behaviors. 
those are the most consistent things that we see from success to success is that if you really boil it down, what do these men, what do these women do to be successful? And there's generally some things we can extract out of that. So in chapter eight, Dr. Maltz is providing us a framework for us to study. So this is why I say it was very tactical when we began today's video is that he's saying, hey, here's the framework, take it and study it. This is what I want you to do. This framework is built upon seven elements which make up a successful personality in his definition. Remember, our creative guidance system in which we've alluded to many times in this book is a goal striving mechanism. Meaning, if you give it the framework and the goal to go after, it's going to want to pursue. And furthermore, this means that when we have the target to shoot for, which is the framework of the successful personality, it strives us towards this target. And again, this is why the framework is so important. It gives us a, a target to aim for. So many people want to improve their personality, right? Many people have this idea of, you know, I feel pretty good about these two or three things, but I want to add the fourth and the fifth, or I honestly feel shitty about myself and, and I don't even know where to begin. This is the chapter for you. This is what we need to really dive into to study to get into that next evolu uh, evolution of your life. So first, let's define what a good personality is. And this is Dr. Maltz's definition. A good personality is one that enables you to deal effectively and appropriately with the environment and the reality in which we live. I'll say that one more time. A good personality is one that enables you to deal effectively and appropriately with the environment and reality. Additionally, with that foundation, gain satisfaction from reaching goals that are important to us. So once we have the first part taken out, we put the cherry on top, and that is to gain satisfaction from reaching goals that are important to us. Now, let us work into the framework of the successful personality. And I thought a lot of this stuff was really, really good, so we're going to dive in. Right before we do, though, I do want to say that we are sponsored in this video by Celsius Tropical Vibe. I uh, need a little bit of a pick-me-up, and I wanted to get this baby cracked open before we fully dive in. I don't drink these regularly, but when I do, um, they are pretty good. Okay, <clears throat> the first S, as we would spell out success, stands for sense of direction. Sense of direction is simply that we have something we are striving for. Let's take a moment and think about one thing we really want in life. Just one thing, could be big, could be small. Something that is important to you and something that gets you excited. What is that one thing? Can we think of it? Can we define it? When you have this clearly defined, you have a sense of direction that you can go. This could be a career transition you want to start. This could be a relationship that you want to nurture or begin. It could be a specific amount of money you want to make. It could be spending time on things that are more meaningful to you. It could be developing the body that you've always wanted. All of these things are option. As long as you have a, a standard in which you are trying to go, you will feel good about yourself because you are functioning as you are meant to function. <clears throat> and so that's really the first predication of what we're trying to get to as far as a successful personality and, and becoming successful is we have to know where we're going. Now, if you go somewhere in the short term and you figure out that goal and you hit it, at that point, you're going to reassess and kind of set a new path. That's why we need both the long term, the unknown goals and the short term and known goals. That combination gives us enough sense of direction in which we're consistently walking forward. The other way to look at this is maybe not so much as a goal, like sometimes the word goal can be a little uh, intense and, and you're like, you know what, I'm not one of them goal striving people. Totally fine. How about we reframe that into say a project? What's a project that you've been dying to work on? Something that gets you pumped up, something that you think is really cool. Same thing, you have something that you are directed towards to make you function as you were meant to function. So. Just to kind of round out the first one here, the analogy from the book that I enjoyed what, from Dr. Maltz, that is, was people are somewhat like a bicycle. Okay, it's a little strange. Why is that? <laughs> a bicycle maintains its poise and equilibrium, equilibrium, sorry, it's been a long day, 
so long as it is going forward. Let me say that one more time. People are somewhat like a bicycle. A bicycle maintains its poise and equilibrium only so long as it is going forward. When we try to maintain and not pedal forward, what we have, we can begin to feel shaky and stagnant. Get your bicycle pedaling towards something that, that you want that's meaningful. And again, you will constantly redefine this, but it's a great place to start. I really do love that though. It just kind of cracks me up. But it's true. If you're feeling shaky and stagnant, think about that bike. You can only coast for so long, right? Eventually, you're going to have to get those pedals move into where you want to go. The U in success stands for understanding. Understanding depends upon good communication. Communication is vital to any guidance system and computer. It has to be able to know and communicate what the heck it is that it's trying to function as. So we must begin with personal communication, meaning how well do we know ourselves? How well can we articulate ourselves? How well can we regulate ourselves? How well can we communicate what we want out of life to other people? And then furthermore, being able to communicate with our peers, with our family, with our friends, etc. We simply cannot react appropriately if the information that we act on is misunderstood. Most of our failures in the human in human relations are due to misunderstandings. That was from the book and I really liked it. Most of our failures in human relations are due to misunderstandings. So there's two parts to this equation. The first part of understanding is listening and deeply listening in and using curiosity to figure out what it is that they're trying to say. The second part is being able to articulate and share what you're trying to say in an effective way. If both parties are both listening and also expressing themselves as they want to, you'll have great communication. And that's our goal. Now, as a little bit of a sidebar here, we're going to deal with fact and opinion. So sometimes we create confusion when we add our own assumptions and opinions to facts. So that's the first part. Sometimes we create confusion when we add our own assumptions and opinions to facts. And then additionally with that, that leads us to come to the wrong conclusion. So sometimes we, we, we're not good at seeing things and reality for what it is and we want our own spin on things. We want our own bias on things. And sometimes that can lead us into issues because it may not actually be factually true. And I would say most people do this. Uh, it takes a really rare breed to have unbelievable discipline and self-awareness to see things for how they actually are but if we're able to do that, we can just be more fact and, and truth driven rather than, oh, I heard some guy somewhere say this about this thing. Well, we don't even know if that's in the ballpark, right? And so our objective is to seek truth. Always, always seek truth. What is true? We must accept truth whether it is good or bad. It doesn't have the emotional attachment to it. It just is truth or it isn't truth. The successful personality is honest with themselves. This is where truth kind of comes into play here. No person can be sincere who lies to themselves regardless of what they think about the matter. So this is saying, in essence, we have to seek truth to not develop. Uh, we can develop an opinion once we seek truth, but we have to seek truth first. And then as we're working on ourselves internally, we need to first be successful in being honest about ourselves, the good and the bad. And so this is just saying as a reference, you can't be sincere if you're constantly lying to yourself. The only way you can be sincere is to be genuine with who you are, where you're at, what's going on, all that good stuff. So we have laid the first two letters of success out. And that was sense of direction and understanding. The first C in success stands for courage. Having a goal and understanding are not enough. That's where our groundwork is laid anyway. You must have the courage to act, for only by action can goals, desires, and beliefs be translated into realities. We must all summon the courage to be who we are in this life. I love that line. That was so good. We must all summon the courage to be who we are in this life. Courage comes in all shapes and sizes and is required from us to pursue meaningful dreams. It's not easy to deal with rejection. It's not easy to be called crazy. It's not easy to, to go off like you feel like you got a project you're working on, a bunch of people shit on it and say, hey, 
that's not going to work out. It takes courage to keep coming back to those meaningful things that you find important. With that, though, nothing in this world is ever absolutely guaranteed or certain. Oftentimes, the difference between success is some, or excuse me, um, let me back up just a little bit here. So nothing in this world is guaranteed. Therefore, we must put time into meaningful pursuits and using courage to go after those meaningful pursuits. Oftentimes, the difference between a successful person and a failure is not one's better abilities, better skills, better ideas, but the courage for the one person to bet on themselves, to bet on their skills, to bet on their ideas. Oftentimes, that's what it really takes is, is calculated risk and acting through courage. And it's not one or two life-defining moments. I think that was another thing I kind of came up with this just to play on it a little bit is that it's in our everyday lives. It's, it's saying hello to someone. It's holding the door for someone. It's developing an idea. It's trusting yourself with that idea um, with really anything. The courage to do the right thing. That is what will help you sleep better at night if you want to develop a successful personality. Because standing still and failing to act causes uncertainty and stress. If we wait until we're certain before we act, we'll make very little progress in life because sometimes we, we're trying to get too much information. We want to get really so like confident on a decision. We have to have all these different angles coming in on it. It's like, no, that's not the point. The point is when we have enough and feel good about it, we have to use courage to then go out and be uncomfortable and, and get the feedback from what it is. And, and the more times you do that, the more feedback you can acquire to really kind of become more strategic in your ability to take risks and continue to do so. So courage and risk taking is inherently a good thing. We want to nurture that habit, that successful habit and personality. To round out courage. When we have faith and the courage to act, when we leverage our own creative potentials, we really live. That rush of positive emotion after the leap is what can fuel us to take the next risk. Sure, we do fail at times, but through failure comes perspective, which enables us to make better decisions in the future. And I love that because when we really live, sometimes we really need to live and to, to feel ourselves out there. Um, that can make us feel quite alive. And to end on a quote, a man who does not bet on a bet, sorry, <laughs> let me recenter myself. A man who does not bet on himself will find something or someone below him to bet on. Hopefully that rings a little bit of a bell and wakes some people up. It's a good quote. Okay, so we have now three letters. We have sense of direction, we have understanding, and we have courage. Now, the second C in success stands for compassion. Successful personalities have some interest in and regards for other people. They have a respect for other people's needs and other people's problems. They respect the dignity of the human personality and they deal with other people as if they were dealing with human beings rather than pawns in their game. It's a psychological fact that our feelings about ourselves tend to correspond with our feelings about other people. When a person displays and feels compassion for others, they invariably show compassion towards themselves. I love that when it was written out there. It was really, that's really beautiful. So what this is essentially saying is that to be compassionate, we must first be compassionate towards ourselves. And if we are able to do that, then we can go out and be compassionate towards other people. Because people are important. People are the core of life. Life would be miserable without people we work with, who we love, who we enjoy spending time with. Compassion isn't necessarily bending over backward at every request. It's having an appreciation of human and the human personality and showcasing and learning empathy to essentially say, I'm a human, you're a human too. How can I be of assistance? That's what compassion is all about. And it's huge. So sense of direction, understanding, and focusing on using understanding to understand the world and other people and listening and expressing yourself. Courage. We must have courage to act on things that we really feel are important and true to us. And then compassion. Now we work to the E in success. We have three more here. And the E stands for esteem. <clears throat> of all the
the traps and pitfalls and pitfalls in life, self disesteem is the deadliest and hardest to overcome. We simply must get through our heads that holding a low opinion of ourselves is not a virtue, but a vice. The person with adequate self-esteem does not feel hostile towards others. He or she does not have anything to prove. He can see facts more clearly and isn't as demanding in his claims on other people. So before I kind of break down this further, let me say the top part one more time. So of all the traps and pitfalls in life, what he is saying is self disesteem. Essentially what this is saying is like the worst trap we can get into is having an opinion of ourselves that is at or below the human level. And so I say that to all the people that are very hard on themselves or they don't believe they have capabilities or whatever the case is, you, I implore you to elevate that negative demonic self vision of yourself. Because if you were made from a creator, they would not make you with imperfections. They would have this enabling feature in you that you and only you can do. And so when you take that low opinion, it just makes the quality of life so much worse. So take the time to elevate that in yourself so you can elevate others. So moving forward here, if you are carrying around a mental picture of yourself as defeated and worthless, you will live a life of suffering. This is kind of going back to the self-image uh, portion we talked about earlier in the book. If, if we feel and constantly meditate on being worthless, not deserving, not feeling love, not feeling enough, we will live a life of suffering. We need to look to elevate ourselves through the esteem, deserving, being worthy of. Because remember, esteem issues are carried out by you to you. That's the only, or not the only, that's the most unique thing about esteem. It's so interesting. It's not other people coming up to you and, and beating you up or saying bad things to you or whatever the case is. It is carried out by ourselves to ourselves. And so if you have low esteem, why wouldn't you come to yourself as a best friend to say, hey, you're definitely deserving of love. You're enough. Whatever, whatever kind of affirmation you want to use, that's important because you have value to the world. And I want you to know that from a teacher to whomever is consuming this. But furthermore of that, you have to elevate that so you can live a life of joy, right? You have to live a life, want to live a life of joy and not live a life of suffering. The word esteem literally means to appreciate the worth of. This appreciation of your own worth is not egotistical because we had a creator. We had other people give on to us to help raise us to where we are today. There has to be someone in your life that has been a giver to lift you up. And because of that, we owe it to ourselves to appreciate the worth of them, which in turn would be appreciating the worth of ourself. So very important. Appreciating your self-esteem and your self-worth is actually a sign of maturity. This is coming from Jim Rohn. The, the, uh, he's the author of a, another book read that we did. But he says there's maturity in that. There's maturity in saying that you have value. There's maturity in saying that you are worthy and deserving. And there's self-worth in that because you're a freaking human being. It, it's so incredible how we are made up to be this awesome, just complex human at the end of the day. So... Just to round, round out this one, and it's a little bit you know, dense in this particular context, but again, for, for esteem, we're rounding this out. Do not downgrade you as the product of life merely because you have not used yourself correctly. You, you just may not be in the right environment. Let me say that one more time because I didn't quite get it out cleanly. Do not downgrade you as the product of life only because you haven't used your bill abilities properly. You haven't been in the right environment to give up yet. When those things click, and they will click, that gives you the juice of life. And then for all the spiritual people out there, your creator made the world, the sky, the earth, the plants, the animals, in their perfect image. Why would the creator make you imperfect if all that to be true? So there's a little bit of spirituality, but also a little bit of just raw kind of human to human uh, for me from the books is saying, hey, maybe you're just not in that right fit yet and keep striving for that. 
The, the third S, I think, let's see here, or no, the second S, yep, stands for self-confidence. So we must have esteem to make sure we are appreciating our worth to then get into confidence. And confidence is essentially evident, or confidence is built upon evidence of experiences of success. So this is somewhat performance-based. When we first begin any undertaking, we are likely to have little confidence because we have not learned from experience to stand on. It is literally true that success breeds success. Even a small success can be used as a stepping stone to a greater success. And so really what this is saying is that anytime we go do something for the first time, no matter if we're naturally good at it or not, the window of failure is very, very large. And so through practice, we get skills and we get successful attempts in life. And through through this practice, we learn how to minimize that window of window and degree of failure. And so confidence is built on finding these little micro victories of progress in a said area. And as we get more reps, we get more confident because our ability to do the thing successfully begins to come together. Because if we're just continuing to, do, to, to lessen the degree of failure, to lessen the degree of inaccuracy, we naturally become more successful. Because as failure closes, success widens, right? So use this as a way to say, okay, where are the areas that I need to develop self-confidence? Where are the areas that I can develop confidence? And where is the evidence of the things that I've done well? And just nurture that and nurture that and nurture that. So taking all of that principle and kind of rounding out this piece here. So uh, anything we desire to learn, we can apply this to. At first, we give, our, we give ourselves grace because we have a large window of error. Yet as time and practice occurs, we learn the tricks of the trade and we become more successful. Now, one piece here that I really want to hammer on and then we'll get kind of to the end of the video is as a distinction in the book, and I agree with this, more reps does not necessarily equate to success. You can't just practice your way to success. We must be mindful of making improvement through repetition. And what that means is if you are not improving from your earlier failures in that large failure window, you're going to just completely uh, get into a cycle of, of redundancy, which can lead to insanity because the definition of insanity is doing the same thing uh, and expecting a different result. So if we're not improving some minor thing, whether that be physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional within uh, a thing we're trying to practice, we won't actually get quote unquote better, we'll hit a plateau. That's why we have to get progress in one of these areas. Maybe said another way, if we make errors on our 20th attempt that are similar to our first attempt, we're not displaying progress, okay? Another element to building self-confidence is to forget our past failures, this is true. We can destroy ourselves by remembering our failure constantly when we should be leaning on what we have accomplished. So don't just make an entire bed out of the failures and constantly live there, failure, we have to give ourselves space for failure because when we have failures, it's likely something we haven't done or something very hard we're trying to do. And so as we're slowly getting better and better, we just leave that failure in the bucket and we forget all about it and just try to get less of a failure through making progression. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. Let me roll down here just a little bit. So we are at the end of success and again, this is a framework. Let's recover the framework. We have sense of direction, understanding, courage, compassion, esteem, and self-confidence. Okay? So as you're trying to develop a framework for a successful personality, lay these things out and then go back and either buy the book and study this or find books on these things to develop these specific traits. This is the framework that you want to study if you want to become a successful personality, okay? So the last one, and it can be the hardest one for some out there. The third S in success stands for self-acceptance. No real success of genuine happiness is possible until a person gains some degree of self-acceptance. The most miserable and tortured people on earth are those who continually strain and strive to convince themselves and others that they are something that they are not. There is no relief and satisfaction like that which comes from, from, from one finally giving up the shames, the pretenses, and the fakingness of not being 
their selves. The, the growth comes from the willingness to be yourself. And so this can be very hard to hear if you're someone who feels like they've been putting on a facade. They feel like they've been putting on certain things about themselves that aren't a- accurate just to fit into a social group or whatever, you know, what have you. You, again, from the prior uh, statement on, I believe it was esteem, maybe, uh, made by a creator in some way, in a perfect image. Therefore, we must learn to accept everything that is both good and both bad. And we must understand that that is love to the highest degree is accepting ourselves because we only have ourselves, right? And so, again, these people that are miserable and tortured are those that are trying to be like other people, right? They're mimicking someone that they're not. And that can make you feel very discombobulated because the only thing that you're supposed to do in this life is manifest the truest version of who you are. And so if you are not able to do that and constantly putting on masks from other people, you're not going to find that deep and rich fulfillment. This is another cool definition that he says in the book that I like. Success, which comes from self-expression, often eludes those who strive and strain to be somebody else. Changing our self-image does not mean changing our actual self. We are changing our own mental picture of the version of ourself that is more evolved than we are today. And I'm going to pause on that and I'm going to hit that one more time because this is very important. So success, as he's saying as a definition, one version of success is complete self-expression. So if you're trying to be somebody else, you can't be fully transparent and authentic to your self-expression. And then within that, as you change your self-image, you're not changing who you are. You're just looking to design an elevated version of who you can become and that is the highest version of oneself through acceptance first and then we can build on that the amazing results come about not as a result of self-transformation even though i would argue this a little bit that self-transformation self you have to have uh acceptance first to then want to express yourself to then want to transform yourself and so amazing results come about I would say with self-transformation, but there's two things here that I really like what he says. Self-realization, realizing oneself for who they are, and self-revelation. And so we have this big three that we're working towards as we're working on self-acceptance, which is I first accept myself. I then love myself for accepting myself. I then desire to transform into the next evolution, but we do that through more realization, which is more self-awareness of who we are and why we're here, etc. And then the revelations come of, oh, as I'm figuring myself out, I'm revealing myself to myself on who I can be in the future in the best evolution of ourselves. So I know that's a super dense topic of conversation, but I hope you're following along with the essence of transformation through realization, through revelation. It's a beautiful essence that he's written about here. So, of course, we are who we are in the present moment, right? We don't change who we are. Yet we can become better quality. That's the way I like to look at it is you can go through a year, another year, and another year, and then the next three years after that, you're working on different areas of your life and our core foundations, which is physical, mental, spiritual, social relationship, and financial. And then all of a sudden, you become this better quality person, right? And that's the goal, right? Is to become the best quality person as you go through life. Creating that better self image does not create new abilities, right? Um, It reveals them to us. It releases and utilizes them. That's the beauty of getting to this higher version is that we're maximizing and utilizing what we're given with from our creator. Last thing, I know that was like a total rabbit hole, but I love talking about it and I love going there. So, This is a cool definition on personality. Our personality is a tool. It is an outlet. It is a focal point of the self that we use in dealing with the world. I'll say that one more time. Our personality, which we're contextualizing within this framework, is a tool. It's an outlet. It's a focal point of the self-expression to deal in the world. It is the sum total of our habits, our attitudes, and our learned skills, which is a method of expressing ourselves. So by giving ourselves more tools through these different practices, we're able to elevate our personality to get more out of life because we have more skills and capabilities. 
back to self-acceptance. Self-acceptance begins with accepting and coming to terms with ourselves, just as we are, our faults, our strengths, our shortcomings, and our success. Many people shy away from healthy self-acceptance because they are forced to be with their mistakes, to understand that their mistakes are basically, they think that they're defined by their mistakes. And we know that we've all made mistakes. It's ridiculous to think we wouldn't, but you as a person are not your mistake, right? That was a moment where you did an action that was not who you normally are. From there, you're still a very beautiful and loving and love worthy person. It's just that you had made a mistake and there are many things that could be influencing you making that mistake. Furthermore, it is important that we learn to accept this self with all of our imperfections and all of our strengths and love and all that because we are the only vehicle that we have. And I hope that inspires you guys. So to round things out, it's a little bit of a longer video, but it's a great framework. The overall goal in life, and this is maybe me writing or, no, this is him, this is him. The overall goal in life is to always be moving towards the most ideal and spiritually enriched version of ourself. We'll never technically arrive there because being perfect is an illusion we tell ourselves to protect our egos. The aim point, meaning the the, the, the final stage in the video game, um, in the movement towards that highest version of ourself would create a wonderful byproduct. So the journey of going through the rankings of self-evolution is the goal. And and I, I wrote this last question in here. I said, would you not be curious to what the highest version of yourself look like? Would you not be curious about that? I think about that a lot. And I, I would encourage you to think about that a lot as well. So the last little nugget I'll share. <clears throat> new roles require new self images. So as we begin the journey, as we continue the journey of studying and making progress towards success through this framework, is that we will advance in life. We will get better equipped and, and better handling our life. When we advance, if we don't revisit our self-image, we'll sabotage our success. Meaning, the person who we believe that we are here, if we carry that self-image through our, our skill acquisition and, and getting better tools and a better personality, we'll always think we're here. So we got to elevate our self-image as we rise in our abilities and skills and our influence. Otherwise, we'll always sabotage ourselves back down. So take for example, you get it, you're working towards a big promotion, you finally get it, it's your first day, and you feel like this sense of imposter syndrome of I'm not supposed to be here. That is the the uh, fault of not elevating that self image with your journey of making improvements. But to combat it, we must discover and recreate our self image so we feel worthy and deserving of the new summit of life. Life is about climbing hills, climbing small mountains, climbing the largest of mountains that and that journey and that process is what's so beautiful about it so thank you guys so much for tuning in sticking with me here i hope it was very impactful hope what it was somewhat entertaining uh love in psycho cybernetics it's it's been a book that's been growing on me throughout our time reading and we are going to be on to reading chapter nine i think it's over here or over here so let's keep reading and thank you guys